Hello, my Bloomington artists. How are you? Hope you're doing well. I miss you, uh, and I hope you're excited for another Meet the Masters project. Uh, today we're talking about a great American artist by the name of Grant Wood. And you may not know that name, but I'm willing to bet that most of you have seen some of his paintings, or at least one. And here it is right now. It is called American Gothic. It's very, probably the most famous American painting there is, actually. And uh, the picture of a uh, of man and a woman with the pitchfork in front of the old Gothic house. It's, you'll see it everywhere. There's all sorts of different versions of it. It's a really cool painting. And our artist, Grant Wood, painted it. Uh, he grew up in Iowa. And if you look here, I'll show you where that is. If you've ever been there, it is in the Midwest. Really beautiful rolling hills. Uh, lots of farmland, lots of cows, lots of really neat things to look at and, and to play. I mean, just love to draw. And they didn't have a lot of money, but whenever he did, he would always try to take lessons. He entered his art in contests. He really just loved to draw and he took it very seriously. Uh, and so as he grew up, he wanted to be an artist, which was not a very common thing for people to for people to do where he where he was from. And so he decided that in order to be an artist and learn more, he wanted to go to Europe. So, you know, to France, Paris, uh, to Germany, to Italy, and see all the great art that was at the, at the other side of the world and all the cool things that were going on. And so he did this and he actually went several times and he saw things like uh, some of the things that we've learned about actually. He went and saw uh, paintings by Monet. If you remember Claude Monet, uh, an Impressionist. And he even practiced uh, some of this style of painting. He also saw people like uh, Picasso's work. Who was, if you remember Picasso, we just learned about him not too long ago, famous for all different kinds of styles, right? Cubism and all sorts of different abstract styles where he took different shapes and put them together. Uh, people like Paul Clay and Vasily Kandinsky. And he saw all this stuff. It didn't seem like anything was really catching on for him until he went to another museum in Germany. And he saw lots of different artists that were a little older. He saw art from what was called the Gothic period. And it was about 500 years ago. And people like Jan van Eyck, uh, who I'll show you this picture here, really cool artist. This is one of his portraits, and this is kind of typical for this time period. People like, like Jan van Eyck would paint these very detailed, very almost hyper-real, like super detailed uh, portraits of people. And they kind of told a story. There was a lot going on in these portraits. And for some reason, uh, Grant Wood really loved these. A lot of people do, and he, but they really spoke to him. And so I think that is really important that he had, he saw all this beautiful art, but it wasn't until he went to another museum that he saw these older paintings that really spoke to him. So think about that, you know, as we learn about all these different artists, and there's always something that we can appreciate from all of them, but sometimes there are artists that we just really, really love. And some that are like, oh, okay, you know, that was neat, um, but some that just, for whatever reason, they just kind of speak to you. I have some favorite artists, and I hope that you've seen some new artists as we've talked about different people. And for Grant Wood, these Gothic artists that lived hundreds of years ago are what he really fell in love with. So he came back to America after going to all these beautiful places and museums, and America at this time, this is 1929, you may have heard the term called the Great Depression. This is when uh, in America there, the stock market crashed and lots and lots of people lost their money. And then the economy kind of fell apart and lots of people lost their jobs and it was a really hard time. He came back to an area, uh, the, the place in the world that he loved and he found everyone was having a hard time. People were struggling. And 
all these interesting pieces of art, these abstract shapes and kind of different colors didn't have a lot of meaning for him. He wanted to help people. He wanted to inspire people. He wanted to figure out how he could, he could, he could be proud of the people that he grew up with, the people that he loved, the hardworking American people that he knew. And he realized that he could do that through his painting in the style that he came to love, known as Gothic painting. And that is where his painting, American Gothic, comes from, that we already looked at, and here it is again, where he had the ability to paint these portraits of what he considered uh, typical American uh, uh, people that had real values. They were hardworking. They were frugal. They, they loved where they lived. They, they loved their families, and he wanted to celebrate that. And so he used this style uh, similar to the old Gothic painters, and painted these these really cool portraits of people and and places uh, around him. And here in American Gothic, we see um, a, a couple of people here posed in front of uh, in front of an old farmhouse. And what's interesting here is that he was driving around Iowa and he noticed this house. This was a real house that he used to kind of model to to, to paint in into his painting. And it reminded him of the Gothic cathedrals that he saw in Europe that were hundreds of years old. And here in the middle of Iowa, in the middle of the United States, there was this cool little farmhouse with a Gothic window. The way it kind of arches up to, comes up to a point there. He loved that. And so he felt like that told the story uh, of, of, of America and the history of it and all that was going on. And he found a couple people here. This is his sister, actually, and his dentist, of all people, modeled for him. He didn't paint them exactly how they looked. He kind of stylized them a little bit in order to, to tell the story. Um, you know, he, they, they're looking very serious in this picture. Um, we have, there's, there's lots of meaning in here, and, and lots of people draw different meanings from here. Um, but I'll point out a couple things that are pretty common that people like to, to look at. Um, you see the pitchfork, um, you know, symbolizing the hard work and hand labor that people were, were proud of doing here. You know, this is an age where there's all sorts of new machines and tractors coming about. And, and uh, the people in Iowa were known for their hard work. And, and so he's celebrating that the same way that he's wearing overalls which is, you know, very common for farmers. Um, he's mimicking patterns, like in her dress, is also up in the window. Some of the vertical lines that are going through his shirt are, are also in the, in the house. And the way that the house in the background kind of all ties in and points to their faces. Um, it's a very interesting painting, and there's a lot going on here. If you ever have a chance to see it, it's in Chicago. And that is where he first showed it at the, uh, the, art, the Museum at the Art Institute in Chicago. And he, it was an immediate success, immediately a very popular painting. And they've had it there ever since. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is probably the most famous American painting that you might come across. Um, and so... This is what Grant Wood became famous for, and he continued to paint in this style. It was known as regionalism, where he's really just celebrating that his, his region of the country, right? That Midwest kind of an area, right? It's called a region, and it was something that he was very proud of. And so he continued to do that um, through the rest of his career. So let's look at a few more paintings that he did. Um, this one is called fall plowing. So again, in the fall, beautiful fields around him in Iowa. This is typical of what he would he would see when he looked around him and where he lived, these beautiful rolling hills. And you see he's clearly, um, we call it like stylizing or adapting the pictures to make them look 
you know, maybe a little bit better <laughs> than they are. Uh, he, he was a master at seeing different patterns in the landscape, whether they were stripes running through the fields or all these little corn, or you look in the trees and you see these kind of pillowy uh, forms repeated through the trees. He had a way of really telling a story in, in his paintings and it's really quite, quite beautiful. Um, uh, speaking of stories, another one that he's very famous for here is the Midnight Ride, Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. This is not how it looked exactly, right? But he's making it, he's trying to tell the story and, and letting people know what he thinks is important about this story. And he loved to remember this. Um, one more picture. This one's called Arbor Day. Um, if you've ever heard of Arbor Day, where we, we plant trees and different things. Um, again, telling this story of coming together, of hard work. We have a family all working together, doing their best. Um, so I hope you enjoy your paintings this week and, and have fun. And uh, we will see you again for the next Neek Masters Project. Bye.